So today you may or may not have noticed that Black Ops 4's multiplayer beta did come to a close right around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, and maybe a little bit later for you guys depending on when the update rolled out, kicking you guys offline, but regardless, today was that final day of the beta. We had two weekends in which we were able to play the game if you were on PlayStation 4, and then one for Xbox One and PC. Personally, I had a lot of fun with it. I really liked to get a lot more hands-on experience and really dive deep into a much more complete version of the game compared to what I had previously seen back within the reveal as well as E3 builds. Because totally honest with you, the game is much more massive than the little early preview that we had at those points. But that said, I want to give you guys my honest thoughts and feedback on the game because there is a lot to talk about with the state of Black Ops 4 right now, but I didn't want to do it prematurely. I know a lot of my friends in the YouTube and content creating world did this right around, say, Friday of last week, maybe after the weekend one beta completed, but I wanted to wait and reserve my judgment and my overall thought process for whenever the actual beta completely ended, whenever we had our full multiplayer experience completed because during that time we saw a numerous amount of changes, some slight tweaks and adjustments that we ended up seeing change some meta even at the more minor scales and also some bigger things as well. So in that sense, I wanted to take a look at now that it's complete, my overall thoughts and feedback of the game. Now, speaking personally, this is just my own opinion. If you guys have anything that differs, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm open to any and all thoughts you guys have, and of course, hopefully we can keep it civil because we're all entitled to our own opinions, but I want to give you guys my thoughts on it. So that said, first things first, let's jump into one thing that doesn't really affect gameplay, but instead is something that I love from Treyarch overall. That being transparency. If you guys follow them on Twitter, Reddits, wherever it may be that they are most active during these times, you'll notice that they ended up posting multiple blog posts, multiple Reddit posts, talking about updates and feedback they're directly taking from the beta and then implementing them almost immediately. We had some immediate turnaround from weekend one to weekend two of an actual title update, and I absolutely love this. I love Treyarch for being in depth, in tune with the community to the point where they want to hear and they want to make changes according to us. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now we'll see how much of that can keep up in time because when it comes to AAA game development, some things don't necessarily just come down to, well, hey, let's do it. It has to jump through some hoops and some verification before that can be done. So whether or not this full transparency that we see in the beta carries over to the full launch, we don't know, but it's a beautiful sight to see, especially starting out this way. It's a great gesture of good faith that we see such communication at the very beginning. And so for that, that's probably one of the biggest things that I loved here out of the beta. But talk Talking about gameplay, two things in particular that a lot of people are really fixating on right now are two obviously core fundamental changes to Call of Duty. One of those firstly being health. Now, admittedly, it's very weird at first to have 150 health and the potential of body armor, but we'll talk about that part in just a second. 150 health is a weird thing, but you get used to it, and health regeneration is probably that second biggest thing, because that's one that we've never had that before. Previously, there was a three to five second cooldown on health regeneration, then it took a few seconds to get back up to full HP. But now this offers not only the ability to control when you want to do this and when you want to regen your health, it also gives you the ability to do that faster. So in that sense, the stim shot and just regular health regeneration dare I say it, is actually pretty awesome. You get very used to it very fast, and I know this is probably the unpopular opinion part of this video, but I really enjoyed that. I loved having the ability to choose when I wanted to regen my health, and though it's massively different, it is something you get used to rather quickly. And in that sense, I got used to it very quickly, even just after my first couple of games, all the way back at the reveal, but having jumped into it immediately with the beta, of course it took some readjusting, but I'm not all that bothered by that. Now, alongside with the health, another big thing that comes along with that is the time to kill. And this is one that's in a little bit of a weird spot. I like the tactical nature, but the one thing that I don't like about the new time to kill, being that we have extra health, is that it ends up attracting more players to a gunfight. So in that sense, if you're in a gunfight, you're more than likely going to need to move immediately after, or maybe even during the gunfight, so as to not have two to three enemies collapse on you. I know that I've been ganged up on in this beta more so than I have in the past couple of years, probably overall in Call of Duty, because the more shots you put in, the more stable you are during that gunfight and the more time players have to react when looking at that minimap. Now granted, it also does add a different level of a playstyle, a more conscious mentality of how you play, maybe say distancing yourself more so, even though SMGs are still that meta, rifle play is maybe a little more favored and not getting collapsed on. But regardless, it is a learning curve that I just have to adjust to, I suppose, and while I might not like it immediately, once I adjust to it, it might change a little bit in my viewpoint. But one thing that I will say both about the health and the 
time to kill is that it, again, might have a slight differing opinion here with this on you guys. It might be something that we see for the first time in a while, a slight skill gap arising. To be able to know when to regen your health, to be able to know when to push off of an enemy or an objective, to be able to just gauge your game differently, it adds a slight skill gap here that we might see emerge out of this. So it's interesting to see how much this might progress, but moving over a little bit, let's talk about some of the changes because while the health and time to kill are relatively overall stable from weekend one to weekend two, weekend one to weekend two saw some changes in the way of sliding. I was a fan of how sliding was at the very beginning, but where it is currently, I'm not too bothered by it. It is something that's a little bit slower, but I'm glad they adjusted it again after that first day of weekend two. That was something that got a little bit crazy. Bunny hopping was taken care of. You previously had no cooldown on on your jumps in terms of height, so you could just jump back and forth for however long you wanted to. But now after each subsequent jump, if you don't take any break in between, you're going to see a slight decrease over time in each jump. So in that sense, that's great that it takes that out and doesn't abuse that system. Score streaks, I actually am okay with how the buffs went around a little bit. I still think there could be more work done with it, but they're definitely much better than they were at weekend one. Now, one thing that I was really interested on was that they count towards nuclears. I'm not entirely sure if this is gonna stay in the game come launch, but it makes it a bit more accessible but also takes away from a little bit of the value of those streaks. For some people that like to go for nuclears, it might not be as sought after if somebody that ends up getting, say, a care package gunship or a care package strafe run can also get a little bit easier of a nuclear as somebody that actually just goes for gun kills. In that sense, I'm kind of up in the air. I'm on the fence with that one, but it is nice to see once again Treyarch adjusting score streaks as how the community saw fit. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is some armor changes because... As I talked about, I'm not a fan of armor. I think that adding health in even the slightest is an absolute awful idea, and I don't think that it fits Call of Duty in the slightest, but it is nice that while it's still there, it's being changed and decreased in effectiveness compared to what it was previously. So weekend one, we ended up seeing that it would block one bullet in particular. Weekend two, it ended up blocking a percentage of that bullet. So depending on the amount of damage that that bullet would do, it wouldn't block the full bullet, but it would also incrementally take different amounts out of that player's health. So it did come down to whatever weapon the player was using. But still, I think armor is downright stupid. I don't think that it belongs in Black Ops 4. And while we saw it in Black Ops 3, that was also something that came around once in a while when your specialist was charged up. It's not something that happened every single life. But other than that, outside of that, one other cool thing that I thought was a neat little change here for this was the loading time that we saw before jumping into maps. That was tuned down a little bit. Previously, it was, I think, a 20 to 30 second countdown timer to vote on your map, and then a 90 second timer to end up jumping into the game. But they brought that time down while also still loading in the map in the pregame lobby. So that's always a cool feature. I'm all for that one. If they can get it down a little further, I'm okay with it. After that, new features like new weapons were added in. The Maddox with the level cap increase was fantastic if you play around with that thing that might be one of my favorite weapons in the game now other things like heist that is honestly one of the most fun things i think i've played in call of duty in a long while granted it is something completely different and you might not like it but it is something that does offer a complete change to how the game is played it's very similar to say csgo but in black ops 4 as its own mode it doesn't change up the core fundamentals of the game but instead is its own little party mode in a sense and one final thing i want to talk about that i think is a really cool addition of black ops 4 is the operator mods. I think this is really awesome and I'm wondering if all weapons are going to have them but some definitely better than others but they also cost a lot to put on your pick 10 system. I think it's three maybe four slots out of your pick 10 just for that operator mod. So in that sense that's a lot to take into consideration but also it can really help out your class setup. But when it all comes down to it all these things are nice but how does it feel? Is the game good? Is it something that I would recommend? Do I like Black Ops 4's beta? Well contrary to what a lot of people may actually think I really enjoy the game. I think that it is a lot of fun. Of course, you guys may have differing opinions, and that's totally cool, but I'm not gonna be one of those people that say it sucks, because while there are still some things that I think could use some work on, mainly say time to kill, maybe say armor changes, maybe still score streaks, maybe some spawns, all that kind of stuff, there is definitely work, do not get me wrong. There still is work that needs to be made on this game to make it a next tier Call of Duty title, or to potentially save the franchises a lot of people like to dub, but overall, I had fun with it and to me that's all I really care about was the game fun was it fresh it offered new things in the likes of heist and the likes of 
Blackout coming soon in the likes of different fundamental core gameplay mechanics. And so in that sense, it was new, it was interesting, it was fresh in that regard, but also still while retaining the fast paced mentality that Call of Duty has been known to love. And of course, yes, there are going to be people that absolutely hate this, but again, that's where it comes down to each their own. And the biggest thing that I hear is that it is a copy and paste of Black Ops 3 or something, to which who knows, maybe it was something that was rushed in development. We don't know the backstory, we don't know anything like that, but if that were to be the case, well, I think that this is a more refined version of Black Ops 3. One of the big things that everybody hated about Black Ops 3 was the movement. We finally got rid of that, even if it was something ganked last second where some map design still looks like it was made for boosting and thrusting. Who knows, but it's still something that I think is more refined. Specialists aren't as overpowered as they were in Black Ops 3. You don't get insta-killed by the purifier. You don't get taken out by somebody you literally cannot see because of their specialist. These are more so slightly reduced versions that offer a little more in terms of horizontal gameplay, not just specifically one thing that does help out vertically. You have more skills spread across the table rather than just putting all eggs in one basket like a gravity slam or something like that. There's more usefulness in different play styles with each specialist now in that sense. And also with a new arsenal of weaponry and a new health system, you end up having developers have more freedom with different tuning. They can make more small refinements to these things instead of completely breaking weapon balance if they change even one decimal on on a weapon. So ultimately, it still to me keeps the feel of what a lot of people liked within Black Ops 3, got rid of some of the crap that people didn't like in Black Ops 3, but also changed some things, took some risks that, again, not everybody will like, and that's okay. If you're not a fan of it, I totally understand and respect that viewpoint. But they also did their best to try and keep the game fresh and new, despite having the same COD formula for the past 14, 15 years. So in that sense, it comes down to, did they do a good job with what they have? I don't know, we'll see in time if they can execute and take everything community feedback wise accordingly, but again, when it comes down to it, I had fun. But ultimately, that's where I stand. I know there's gonna be some people that absolutely hate this take on it, to which I apologize, man. I'm just speaking my thoughts here on this. I've enjoyed this game. I've enjoyed the COD franchise for absolute ages, and I think that we do have something that's different and might actually go somewhere with this one, but it just comes down to how execution happens in time. That said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you guys agree with me? Do you have any similar thoughts that you'd like to share? Do you guys have something that you completely disagree with? Whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hopefully we can keep it civil. I know that some people have some very passionate thoughts here on this, so that's all good and dandy if you wanna vent that, but the least I ask is to try and keep it civil with each other. So if you see somebody that has a differing opinion, let's have an actual dialogue with it. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like down below if you guys did. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and want to stay up to date with all things Black Ops 4, World War 2, anything Call of Duty related. We got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, a little more active over there. So that link is also down there for you guys to check out if you're willing to do so. That said, thank you all so much for watching. Might as well espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.